Welcome, everyone. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Uh, this is the Niagara Foundation's virtual lecture series featuring our special guest, Lorna Byrne. I want to thank Mr. Uh, Fairhut, Executive Director Vivian Becker, and Pearl Byrne for moving mountains to make this event possible. Uh, I also want to thank Lorna Byrne, today's special guest, for making the time to be with us, with us on her Saturday evening. Hi, Lorna. Hi. <laughs> My pleasure. I'm delighted to be here chatting with you. Um, I'm actually very excited about it. Yeah, I, I think I am too, and right everyone nervous. I've contacted uh, yeah. have been looking forward to this uh, in a big way. Um, if you don't mind, before we get into Lorna's message, mm -hmm. I'd like to speak a little bit about the Niagara Foundation, and then I'd like to introduce you so that those yeah. that aren't familiar Go with ahead. work have a little bit of a background. Uh, the Niagara Foundation is a nonprofit, non-sectarian organization dedicated to fostering peace through interfaith outreach and education. The Niagara Foundation was founded by a Turkish poet and author, Fatula Gülen. Uh, he is now their honorary president. For those of you who are not familiar with Lorna Byrne and her work, please allow me to introduce her. Lorna Byrne was born in Ireland in the 1950s and has been able to see and interact with angels since she was a child. Lorna has severe dyslexia and was labeled as quote unquote retarded at school and to this day has a great difficulty reading and writing. Growing up, the angels uh, told her that her ability to keep that secret for fear that one might, uh, she might get institutionalized. But the angels told her that one day she would write about God and the angels. Being dyslexic, she doubted this. And, and Lorna, if I'm saying anything wrong, just smack me across the face and I'll, I'll stop and I'll let you. No, you're, you're, you're fine. <laughs> but the angel said that the means to write would be provided when the time was right. After being pestered by the angels about writing, she finally admitted that she would. And a series of events unfolded where complete strangers provided her with a PC with dictation software installed, allowing her to speak the pages into being. In 2008, Angels in My Hair was published and rose to the number one bestsellers best spot to date. It has sold over a million copies and has been published in 30 languages. Her autobiographical account of her life with the Angels has brought her to lectures, workshops, worship events worldwide, and she has founded children's found it, uh, charities and continues to counsel others in God's love and connecting to their guardian angels. So for everyone who's joining us by YouTube, um, we're going to extend this as long as necessary to uh, accommodate everybody. Um, before we get into that, eventually we will open up the YouTube chat to take questions for Lorna. Um, but I gotta tell you, Lorna is not a fortune teller. So don't ask her questions like if you're gonna win the lottery or something like that. So please be aware of that when you're forming your questions. She can only answer you from her experience or whatever the angels are telling her or not telling her. So please keep that in mind. Um, and we may not be able to get to everybody's questions. Uh, we'll try our best to answer as many questions as we can. So thank you everybody for joining us on YouTube streaming. And thank you very much, Lorna, for, for being here. It's a, it's a great honor to, to see you today. Thank you. Well, I, I don't know where to start, and I, I suppose maybe the best place is, you know, from the moment I was, was born, you know, just lying in my cot, maybe I was only a couple of months old, and I always remember my, and I know people say that's impossible, but I always remember my mom, you know, tucking me in, and I trying to, you know, catch the angels, touch them with, my, but I didn't know they were angels, you must remember that, um, because I was an infant, couldn't even talk at this, this stage. But it was about when I was two, maybe two and a half, and I was playing in front of the fire with my little brother. And my dad had made little wooden blocks. And while we were playing there, um, my little brother said to me, I always call him my little brother. Um, he said to me, you know, he can have his back to the fire because the fire won't hurt him. And being a two and a half year old, I took no notice, but it was when we were playing and 
our hands went into each other. You know, it was like his hand went into mine and mine went into his and it just all sparkled. And I felt so much love. And it was at that time that the angels that were around us turned to me and said, I must keep this a secret. I must tell no one. And they told me something else. They told me my little brother was a soul. He had died before I was born. And sometimes I would see him in my mom's arms as an infant, you know, and other times he would be older than myself. There's stories in the book where he was older. Um, and I, I suppose that that has been a great message to the world, um, to every mother and father, every, every friend, you know, right across the world, knowing that we have a soul. Because my little brother is, in one sense, proof of that as well. You know, that, that we have a soul, we don't die, we live he just He just came back and decided he wanted to hang out with his well, little I, sister. I would say God allowed that. You know, um, I, I just find it, you know, so incredible that people felt, found so much comfort in that. And one thing God has always shown me, and this was this is in another book, I think it's in um, Angels at My Fingertips, I tell the story where our soul is that spark of light of God. You know, it's, it's the spiritual side of us. And, and we have a human side, which is f flesh and blood. And we need that to intertwine now, nowadays. And it doesn't matter what religion you are, because lots of times I, I am being asked, you know, why don't you change your religion? Like I, I speak to lots of Muslims in America and, and in different parts of the world. And they often say that to me, but I say to them, you know, it's the one God, there is no need. You know, we should all be united together in love and peace and harmony, you know, having no, what would you call it? you know, not fighting over our differences. We should be loving. And, you know, just even going on from that, you know, just as I grew, even in school as a child, the angels were constantly reminding me to keep it a secret. And I always smile because lots of people in the world think that it's all about the angels. And I smile because God has told me, no, it's not. It's, it's about God bringing us back. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about, and from my, I've read your books and, you know, on, honestly, I'm, I'm, we were talking about this before we started the video. Um, I have only, and your book was published in 2008, but I have only encountered you this March yeah. as a direct as a direct result of COVID-19, I was home and had nothing to do and was fumbling around YouTube. And who's this woman, Lorna Byrne? And your message is, it's not about, really about angels, it's about us. It's about our soul. That's so right. could you talk a little bit more about, I mean, the, the title of this, this lecture series is um, God's gifts to us, our soul and our guardian angel. Can yeah. you talk a little bit more about that relationship and what a soul is and what a guardian angel is? Well, a guardian angel is, you know, an angel that that God has chosen for your soul um, and it's appointed to you and it can never leave you, not even for one second. So you're never, never alone. And literally everyone has an angel, a guardian angel that is there with you constantly. And it doesn't matter what religion the person is or even if they say they don't believe in anything, they have a guardian and to me, that is incredible because I have been traveling the world and I have never seen anybody in any country without a guardian angel, no matter who I'm speaking to. And they comfort. And your guardian angel is the gatekeeper of your soul. And it loves you unconditionally. 
but it's it can, most, it can never be anybody else's guardian angel. No, no, and it's most important job for your guardian angel is to bring your soul back home to that place we call heaven. And I don't know exactly where it is, but I know it exists. Um, and our soul is that spark of light of God. It's a, a little piece of God himself, whether you call God a man or a woman, or you, you know, we, we put all human things on, on God. We see God in, in a human appearance, but our soul is so magnificent. It is billions of times more than any angel ever could be. And again, that's another reason why your guardian angel never leaves you for one second. So is a, I'm sorry, is, is a guardian angel, do they have souls? Um, I have to smile you asking that question because that was a question I was asked loads of times. Um, you know, when I started to give talks and everything like that, and I was giving out to God and I was giving out to you know what am I going to say you know what have I to say and God just said I have to to be truthful and say what God has said to me um, so I'll say the words <laughs> <laughs> angels were created long long ago that is what has been said by God and by God and they are creatures and we are more than any angel ever could be. God has never said that they have a soul, but yet they are light. They are magnificent and in a pedestal. Um, but the angels have us on the highest pedestal because of our soul. Um, you know, and and we don't seem to we're afraid humanly to make that connection be between ourselves and our soul. And, and we need to do that. You know, we need to start to not to be afraid to say, um, I'm a human being, but I'm a spiritual being as well. I have this beautiful soul. I'm, I will live forever because of that soul. You know, and, and no matter what the human self does, you can't, you can't put a stain on God. So you can't put a stain on your soul. And I know some religions say, oh, no, that's you do. But how can you do that to God? Ask yourself a question. What you had mentioned before, first, I want to clarify, there's kind of a, an expression you use uh, that makes sense. It made sense to me when I first heard it, when you say you're giving out to God or giving out to your angels. Oh, yes. <laughs> you mean you're complaining? I'm complaining. You're complaining yes. to them. Right. I'm complaining. I'm, uh, I'm not agreeing on something, or I'm <laughs> very annoyed, or you know, go away, leave me alone. That's ridiculous. I'm not doing that for you. So I do give out to God an awful lot. Um, I have to say, um, there was a a recent um, series of announcements from the Vatican from Pope Francis. Um, one of them was, and I think you and I had talked about this uh, a few days back. Um, one of them is that all faiths should get together and pray as one and to approach God as a friend and an ally. To approach God not as something remote and on a pedestal, but as a friend and a colleague, somebody who's going to look after us. And, and you kind of laughed about that and said, I know they read my books. Yes. But they can't admit it. <laughs> Um, I know, I know, um, but but yet I I do get you know acknowledgement from different bishops and and imams and and ministers of all different religions. Um, God has never allowed me to put up any barriers. You know, we we have to we have to um, love each other and. We should be praying together. All religions should be praying to, together. And I, I know you mentioned I had the Children's Foundation, but maybe I should share this miracle because my whole life has just been one constant miracle, even though it has had pain and hurt in it. But I wouldn't be who I am today 
only for the mixture of, of life, of everything. But um, how would I start? We, we have started up a, another foundation, which is called, uh, you know, I'm dyslexic, so to pronounce, Serif, it's, it's S-A-R-I-F foundation. And that's a complete miracle because when I was a child, um, and even a teen teenager, God told me about this, and so did the Archangel Michael. And my young daughter reminded me recently, well, she's 24 now, but she said, when, when I was about 10 or 11, Mom, you told me about this grounds that God said you would have, and this a big, huge house. And... I just looked at her and said to her, why did I tell you that? And, and she says, I was 10 or 11. And before my husband, Joe, died, we used to go down to um, Thomastown to see this family. Um, they were great support to us and, and we were great support to them. But on the journey down, on one occasion, it was like as if the car went into slow motion and Joe turned to me and said, are you okay? And that's the cat, is it? Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's okay. I told uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> the cat is fine. And the Archangel Michael was standing at these two pillars and just said, Lorna, one day you will live here. And this has gone back years so how's that coming? Is it is is it is it a residence or is it going to be a retreat it's, center or it's going to be a retreat center? It's going to be whatever God wants it to be. Um, and again, I want all faiths and all religions to come. I want schools, education, um, connecting back spiritually in that way. Many many things. I mean, one thing that. Um, God has told me and the Archangel Michael and even the Archangel Gabriel reminded me a few days ago because he reminded me you're going to be talking, you know, so don't forget to mention it. And I said, oh, sure, I'll probably forget. I have a head like a sieve, you know, and um, I know. But so I think, I, I'm, I'm I, sharing with you, but. Well, I very much look forward to someday visiting. And if there's an I event do. that you're you're holding, I, I'd love I to do. come visit. I, I would love that because another thing that um, the angels had told me, um, an Archangel Michael, and that was one day I would meet a scientist that would help to give more proof of our soul. Because oh. this is what we're talking of would give more understanding. And I was told this 20 years ago, nothing ever happens, you know, just because God tells you something or or he sends Archangel Michael well, or, or Archangel Gabriel to give you a message, that doesn't mean it's going to happen tomorrow. All oh, right, right. <laughs> you must always remember that. But it's kind of hard for folks. I'm sure many, many folks who are, we've got people from uh, all religions, all backgrounds, um, some skeptics, of course, and some non-believers, I'm sure. That yeah. I strong-armed into doing this on live stream YouTube. Um, friends, family, colleagues, people I don't know, uh, people who run charitable foundations, that kind of thing. They're all watching this. And a lot of them are probably scratching their heads and saying, Lorna speaks to God. And Lorna gets visits from Archangel Gabriel and Archangel Michael. Who are these angels? And what, you know, but if you read the books, um, you talk about some of these angels and there's so many different kinds of angels other than guardian angel that are really your friends. These people, these angels have been in your life since childhood. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Well, to, to me, it's just normal. It's just normal for me if, if I was out um, shopping and seeing all of the, you know, the people, men, women and children, I would see, I would see them, but I would see the guardian angel as well with them. And I would see, you know, maybe other angels that were, would be coming and going. Um, 
We're having a little bit of a technical difficulty. Okay. Uh, can you not hear me? Now I can hear you. You were frozen up there me? for a little bit, but everything looks okay. okay. <laughs> and on this end, I think it's it's saying it's it's okay. There there are many really incredible and that is that each and every one of us has has a guardian angel that never leaves you for one second and is the gatekeeper of your soul other angels come and go just like the archangel michael or the archangel gabriel or raphael or, or any of the other angels they will come and go all all of the time and um, the angels really interact with our lives and really you know nowadays because the world is changing and we are all becoming more educated and people are asking, you know, the question, what's the meaning of life mm -hmm. in that way? And I always say to people, it's, it's to live life. You know, don't be thinking of, you know, just what's the meaning. It's to live it and it's to enjoy it. And it's to connect ourselves with our, with our soul, with the spiritual side because many priests and bishops and imams and ministers, and, and I don't know all of the names, they have often come to me and said to me, and I always remember the first time it was said, I was literally shocked because I thought if somebody was a priest or a bishop or a minister or an imam, um, they would know God is real. Mm -hmm. I can assure you God is real. I can't prove it, but you will receive that proof yourself. And I think you will receive that proof yourself when you allow yourself to become more aware of your soul. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's to kind of remind yourself that, that you have a soul and that you are full of goodness and you're full of pure love. And Wait, one, maybe Lorna, if you could talk a little bit more about what the soul is. Where does it come from? It comes why, did, to, why did God give us this gift of a soul? So, um, I often ask that question myself. I have asked God, you know, why did you fall in love with us? Um, but God did. For some reason, he fell in love with us. And sometimes when you look out in the world and you, you see what's happening in the world, you would say to yourself, God is crazy for falling in love with us. <laughs> What did he see? I don't know what he saw, but I think he saw goodness in us. Somehow he saw that goodness and that goodness is still there. You know, so so each, each soul you say in, in many of your presentations on YouTube and, and in the books is yeah. really, is really a tiny little speck of God. It is. It's, it's, it's a portion of God. It's, it's like he, he takes a piece from his heart. You know, he gives us, he always gives me a human appearance. And in Angels at My fin Fingertips, I'm, I'm explaining, you know, him reaching in and taking a little piece, that spark of light of his heart, and he putting it on in the palm of his hand. And this is the soul. And it's so tiny, but yet so enormous. And... I can't describe, I can't even really describe God only for he gives a human appearance. Um, and your soul is just, it's just so full of light and there's so much, how can I ex explain, you know, love that comes from your soul. You are pure love. So I, I know because of our soul, we can be absolutely incredible. We can change think, this world. We can make this world, which I have been shown, into a little glimpse of heaven. We, we can do it. But it's like we have to recognize that we have a soul. And that soul is that spark of light of God. It's actually a piece. It's, it's like, you know, taking a, a little bit of, of you from your body and it becoming a soul. But God, God did that. He took a pinch this tiny little bit that is absolutely fills every part of your human body and yet is out there. You know, it's, it's. How do we recognize our soul? I mean, you had mentioned before that it's important for us to love ourselves and that the soul is pure love. Right. 
And it's difficult to love others if you can't love yourself. Yes, that that is one thing that um, Archangel Michael and Archangel Gabriel have said, and and even God has said, you know, um, we have to love ourselves. You know, we have to allow ourselves to to love ourselves so that we can love others. And it's like, inhumanly, if we allow ourselves to love, we allow our souls to come forward. So our soul can open up more and help us to feel that love, that pure love that can never run short. You know, so many times we are afraid that if we love someone too much, we'll get hurt, so we won't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you know, when we have compassion and love and, and we cry because someone has been hurt. That that is you for that moment, allowing, connecting more to your soul. Uh, you know, and to me, that 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 is incredible. Imagine how if we allow that to happen more, we wouldn't be hurting others there would be no war there'd be no hunger there would even be no differences in one sense in in religions we wouldn't be saying you know we're better than you you know or anything yeah. like that we would just love we would just love and and we would make this world like a little glimpse of heaven and um, and i know spiritually because god has said it we can do this we can change our world and even now, I think we are having a great opportunity to change the world because of what has happened. And I know one reason why God has allowed this property to come to myself. You know, it's not for me, you must understand. It is for the world. And I know it will be there in 300 years time. It was given by someone with a, a pure heart, freely. It was a gift. Like, I don't have money, you know, and yet this person gave it because I suppose they, they saw all the good that could come of it. And that is the important thing. It's, it's to, your guardian angel and God will never ask you to do anything that would hurt another human being or hurt our planet or, you know, destroy anything. No matter what religion you are, or whether you believe or not, um, life is all about love, compassion, and hope. I mean, when I first saw you say that on YouTube, it sent goosebumps up and down head to toe. Because to me, when we're looking at, we've got COVID-19 pandemic, we've got people dying by the thousands, we've mm -hmm. got riots in America. Oh, I know, yeah. You wrote on your website about the, the Black Lives Matter and how nobody should be discriminated or abused like that. And so we can talk a little bit more about that later. But I guess my point is, is that you talk about the soul being part of God. And every one of us, everywhere in the world, has a little bit of God and that love inside of them. And if we were to connect together, how could we kill one another? We, we wouldn't. I'm imagining some poor soldier being sent to war and pointing a gun at another soul. And how could you pull the trigger if you knew that both of you shared this little bit of God? You know, you should throw your rifle down and go and give that poor, poor guy a yes. hug. Exactly. Um, that, that's what I have said, like umpteen times that, you know, we, we have to acknowledge and not be afraid because I think no matter what religions they are in, in the world or what people believe, we are afraid. We're afraid to admit that we believe in God or a guardian angel. We're afraid to admit that we have a soul. We have this barrier up, you know, and we should take that barrier down because we wouldn't harm each other. We wouldn't even be destroying our planet. We, we might think that today is all about material things but it's not about one material thing. If, if you're losing a loved one or someone that is so close to you, and I have met many parents who have turned to me and said they would give everything away if God would allow their child to live or the husband or the wife. 
you know, love is about love. And there's loads of hope in, in the world today with all of those negative things happening. Um, we should reach out and love each other just more and allow our souls to come forward and not be, what would you say, not use um, God as a weapon to put down, down others. And, and I often use that word because we use God as a weapon. We use God as a reason why we should condemn someone else because they have done wrong. You still have to love that person who has done wrong. Let's talk about using God as a weapon because over the centuries, God has often been used as a weapon. Terrible, terrible mm -hmm. things have been done in the name of God. And I always tell my friends, be very, very, very careful what you do in the name of God or the least among them. But uh, uh, let's talk about that. Um, how can we, what's the best way to put this? How can we come together? How can we maybe interfaith prayer, going to another, uh, the, the holy site of another religion and asking to join them? Or how can we stop this misuse of God's name in, in doing bad things? I mean, you were at a mosque recently, not, not terribly recently in New York. Yeah. And I think Betty, was it Betty Williams? And Betty Williams was was with this, and I, I was in that mosque. Um, it's not there anymore, I believe, um, because it was beside the you know the towers that the airplane went oh. into. Um, so it's 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 actually gone now. But one of the last time I um, I was in it was twice with Betty Williams, um, and then another time I was. And I had to smile afterwards. You never know what God is going to do. Like, you know, afterwards, you know, the mosque was crowded with men and women and um, they had a speaker. I can't remember who the speaker was. Forgive me for that. But I always remember afterwards, I was just asked with the person I was with just to wait a little while. And lots of people were, were leaving. And then suddenly a whole load of imams came and... They all started sitting on the floor, you know, and they said, Lorna, come and join us. We, we want to talk. We've lots of questions to ask. And this has happened so many times. And as I said, one question that I already mentioned that is often asked, is God real? Uh -huh. yeah. You know, God is real. And, and that's very important for us to remember. And he loves us. He fell in love with us and gave us part of himself a soul that spark of light of god that's what i call it it's it's so pure so immaculate let's take all the by all the words out of the the dictionary and and or out of the bible and, and use all those real positive words you know define and i i don't even know half of them and because i'm dyslexic i can't even pronounce them so you could probably fill a big sheet with with um, all of those words and you could never describe the soul. You could never describe that love. But you've mentioned that it's completely precious. and Oh, completely, completely precious. Um, like some people would often say to me, but Lorna, how, how could you pray? Because sometimes I would ask people to pray for a particular leader in the world. And sometimes they would say, you know, how could you pray for that leader? He has slaughtered his people. Yeah. He has done horrific things. But if we don't pray, will they ever get to listen to their guardian angel or listen to God and allow their soul to come forward and be merciful, be compassionate, allow that love out for them to change? Yeah, I, I think I mentioned to you when we were setting this up that the... Uh, uh, Niagara Foundation was founded by a, a, a Turkish scholar, um, and many of the members are, are Turkish. Um, and you've heard that uh, uh, many of these people have arrived in America with nothing but the shirts on their back, having been kicked out of their own country. 
how can what message do you have for people who are dealing with uh, authoritarian leaders and authoritarian governments? Um, you say to pray for the leader, pray for the, the leadership and the government that they make the right decision. Is there any yeah. other thing that they can they can bring to God to, that might help them in some way? Well, I, I'm I'm always um, at every talk, and I think I've even mentioned it in the books. Um, I would always say to everyone, one thing that God has told me: we must stand up and play our part for for justice, for hope, for love, for peace. So we can't, in one sense, um, we can pray. But God needs needs us to help as well in action. You know, so you to, we, we must words, do it peacefully. You have to pray with your feet, in other words. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, and I always have to smile at God, you know, for, for that. Like, you know, um, when the angels used to say to me as a child, I would write about God and us, and that was them. Um I laughed at the idea because I couldn't read or write. And even when I was a grown woman and with my young children, and when Archangel Michael came up behind me and said, God said, it's getting near time for you to write. And I remember being really annoyed with Archangel Michael, never mind God that day, um, because I was a busy mom. And it was I, I, cold, and I was on my way home after being at the shops, and I had a, a baby in the pram, and and here was Archangel Michael bringing me a message from God. Couldn't he have held on to later? <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, but I, I always, I always remember turning to him, and and when he when he had said, you know, God said it's, it's getting near time for you to write, and I, I remember stopping and and looking at him and just saying. How on earth does God expect me to write even one book when I can't read or write? Well, tell a little bit. Oh. I introduced a little bit about how this hall came to be where you wrote your first book. But you can't read or write. And here the angels are telling you, Lorna, it's about time for you to write. And you're frustrated and you're trying to get on with your life. So who is this person who showed up with the laptop? Um, well, after, after Joe had died... Um, my husband, um, I was finding things really hard and Archangel Michael came to pester me again, never mind Archangel Gabriel. And it was very hard for me to get up the courage as a, a young mother who couldn't read or write and, and who had kept that even a secret, you know, all my life. And saying to someone who had just, you know, been in, in and out of our lives when Joe was alive on, on and off and just saying to them, I'm going to write a book and you know I can't read or write. And they just looked at me. They never said anything, not a word. And it was after Joe had died one day, they knocked on the door, it's in the book, and um, they just came to visit I remember being shocked and didn't know why they were standing at the door and inviting them in a cup of tea. And he brought these boxes in, making it short and put them on the table. And then that was a miracle. Like, and expected nothing in return. There's so many miracles. You know, God is working miracles all of the time. And not being able to read or write, never mind use a computer or a printer or a speakeasy, you know, um, crazy to think I could do that. But then again, someone else down in Thomastown, where I am now, um, somehow listened to, to God, the guardian angel, came up and knocked on my door and... Um, husband and wife we became friends and said I see you have that and I said I I don't know how to use it and he just set everything up and made it so simple that I literally only had to press the button because when I look at that pad it just moves around so much well I mean Someone says to me hit the key or or something like that <laughs> Can't well, find it. <laughs> I remember when you and I first had a Skype conversation. I'm going to let you hang up because I, I don't know what to push, you know. Yeah. So I understand how extremely difficult it must have been for you, even 
speaking, and in, in one of your books, you describe one of your daughters doing editing. What was her guardian angels doing behind her when she was editing your your? Oh, she was um, on on different occasions. Um, my um, youngest daughter, um, when she's doing the editing, sometimes her guardian angel is pulling the hair out of her head and kind of saying, "Hey, this is so mad," <laughs> you know. I mean, some of these angels sound like they're quite, quite the characters. They've got senses of humor. They goof they, around. They, they they dance. They yeah, that that is the thing, you know. Um, angels do have a sense of humor. They they do everything to uplift us. When we're feeling down, they they seem to be doing things to help to get us to smile or or feel better. You know, and even sometimes when a person is so, so down, you know, I would see them, you know, holding a light in front of them, helping them to see the light of hope that, come on, you can get out of this. The light is there, you know, come forward. Um, but they can be very serious at times as well. Well, you know? if you can believe it, Lorna, it, 43 minutes have already lapsed. And wow. it's like we just started talking and I'm, you know, I'd like to talk to you until midnight, but I know that's not going to happen. No, so that, that won't happen. <laughs> I wanted to bring a couple that's points it. up that are, I think are important for the audience that we have. And then we've got a number of questions from the YouTube live stream that I can start to ask you. Okay. Um, you had mentioned before a number of times, a, a couple of very special angels. And one of them is, uh, we'll, we'll talk about first, mm -hmm unemployed angels, and you can talk about that second. But first, you were talking about gathering angels, kind of the special nature of America. Yeah. Can you, can you explain why America is so important? And I know my friend in the UK is now pounding the table on his glass of Merlot must have slipped off by now. But, oh. <laughs> but America is important, you say. America is very important. And no matter what's happening to it today in the world or what has happened to it in the past, God has had these American, I call them the American gathering angels. Um, and I have seen them since I was quite young as well, even in Ireland. And anytime I ever saw one with, with um, someone, they always headed off to America at some stage. Um, America is where all races from all over the world were first brought together. And these are meant to make such a difference to the world. You know, these are meant to kind of, you know, open up spiritually. You know, start to see your guardian angel, start to recognize your soul. You're meant to be, how would I say it? I, I don't want to say too much. I know I have said quite a bit in the book as such, um, but you are going to make the difference in the world. So. I really need America to get it together. Yeah, I'd like you that need, too. You need to get it together. We, and we there are, should uh, be no differences. I you think said, you're all Americans. Whether it's politics or you name it, there are so many people are denying, for example, that we have climate change, that we have global oh, yeah. warming. And they're all fueled by, uh, I'm sorry to say this, I don't want to put anybody down. Right. Um, special interests in the fuel industry that want to continue to sell fossil fuels, even though our glaciers are melting and our air is polluted and we have too much CO2 in the atmosphere. You talk about how to, how important it is for our, our environment. Yeah. And, you know, the fact that we, I am a mixed race, not mixed race, but mixed nationality descendant of, of Europeans. Um, many, many of us in this country are immigrants and you talk about the importance of that mixing together of different people. Um, anyway, talk to us about unemployed angels. Well, un unemployed angels are there for everyone and God is still pouring them down from the heavens in the bucket falls. I call them the bucket because it's like as if God turns a, a bucket upside down and an angel, if, if you can see it, this enormous angel in your mind kind of rolled up into a ball and just tumbling down to the earth. And then just before it gets here, it straightens up and its feet don't even, no angel's feet actually touch the ground. 
They just, if, if you see an angel, you will just think their feet are touching the ground, but they actually won't be. And these unemployed angels, they're there to help us with anything and everything, just all the trivial things. And, and I know many people have asked for unemployed angels to help them in, in their life. And I know lots of people have asked for unemployed angels to go to friends or strangers and give them a helping hand. Um, and many a time somebody would come up to me and they would say, they have their unemployed angel working very hard, never mind their guardian angel. So the point, the message to everybody watching today is to put a, a couple of unemployed angels to work for them. Yes, exactly. They okay. love, because um, sometimes I'd be walking down the street and there'd be so many unemployed angels. and they would Are there any there them. in the room with you right now? Yes. Ah, <laughs> two. <laughs> two well, tell them I said room. hello. I've, well, I'm sure, I, don't, I don't know if you can see my room. I'm sure the computer screen is... I, 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 I can see your room, but I can't see your angel. That that would be something that would be very rare. It it it's very seldom happens that I would ever see an angel on the screen. Okay. Um, my recommendation for everybody who's interested, and we have a number of questions now that I'd like to get into, um, in interest of time, so that actually Lorna can enjoy her Saturday evening without looking at this ugly mug, um, but. Uh, I would suggest to everyone who's interested that they pick up a copy of one of her books. And I suggest her first book would be the best one to, to start with, uh, Angels in My Hair. It, it really opened my eyes in a great big way. Um, and we'll get to more about that in a minute. But here's some questions. This may sound fun, but I really wonder, how does she communicate with the angels? Is it a feeling that they see in her heart? Okay, that's Do that's you actually big, speak with them and hear them. I, yeah. Um Archangel Michael, if if he was coming with a message, he would actually appear and give a physical appearance. Um and on different occasions, as you know, in Angels in My Hair, I described one time when I was in Maynooth College and um, the two priests that had their prayer books in their hand and were praying, walking around, um, they said to the Archangel Michael, hello, Father. Of course, an angel will dress and make its appearance like everyone else that is around. Mm -hmm. um, and they ignored me. I always remember being really annoyed. I said, Archangel, I never put it in the book, but so, I was very annoyed. So to all of the clergy who are listening now, please don't ignore Lorna in the future. It's annoying. But um, yes, I, I hear, hear the angels like I would hear you, like I hear your voice. And, and I know in the book, sometimes I explain, I can hear on a, what I call a three-way system or a five-way system. I don't know how I do it, but I guess I do it spiritually because I'm so aware of my soul. And if I can do it, I don't see any reason why you can't to help you in your life. And, and, and I know in the future, um, everyone will see angels. So I, I believe we will get there, but I would love America to come together. The, all the Americans, put your differences aside, you know, come together, please, because- well, The message is, if, if you are against President Trump, to go up to a Trump supporter wearing a Make Amer America Great Again hat and give them a big hug and say, I love you and God loves you too. Would that be a good start? I think so. Like it's it's kind of, you know, like sometimes I explain, you know, one one vision um, I have been shown um, and that, is, that was to be able to tell people um, that if I had to save millions of people and I had to bring them all up to the top of a mountain and one got left behind and everyone at the top of the mountain said, but that's the worst person in the world. The killer that has done literally everything has destroyed our world. My love for them, I'd have to go back down for them. I couldn't leave them beh behind because I love everyone regardless of whether, they're, whether we say they're good or bad. 
I still I, love them. I think that's such a beautiful message of redemption. So it's you, just... you, you, have to, you have to love and you have to help things to change, but don't do it in hatred. Like, I, I know I have told one of the stories in the books um, and I've heard the same story so many times from especially men, but sometimes women, where they've done something horrific because of what was happening around them, because their family was hurt or slaughtered or, you know, and, and they took revenge and, and they would say, how can we break revenge? Revenge can be broken by love, yeah. by that, forgiveness. There's so much, you know, it reminds me of uh, Yoda who says the dark side is, is approached. And we've managed in the, the last almost hour, Lorna, not to even mention the dark side once, which is, I like a lot. I, but, I, like, I like that because I never really talk about it because if I talk about it, it's giving that side acknowledgement. So I, I always avoid well, that, let's let's keep talking about the light then. I like that too. Yeah. Um, the light is important. You know, I think and and maybe you agree or, or not, you can let me know. But I think thoughts have a way of manifesting. And a wise man once told me, if you have a dragon, don't feed it. Yes. Feed the feed the light part of your heart and the light part of your mind and don't give any energy to that, which would cause destruction such as fear. Yeah. I, I think reading your book and, and uh, looking at a lot of your presentations that are available on YouTube, help me not to fear it. It's like, what do you have to fear? What's there to fear? You know? So thank you for that. A couple more questions. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> What could we do to keep interaction with our souls and God more frequent, meaningful, and helpful? Well, I, I think one thing you can do is, you know, is to pray. You know, now you don't, you can be praying, driving your car. You can be praying, walking down the road. You don't have to um, lock yourself in somewhere and be completely silent. You can even meditate when you're walking. You know, if you're walking in the car, you can be in in connection with with your soul and just being aware of allowing your soul to come forward and when you're out in nature that is something that you know it relaxes us you know it fills us with peace and comfort we suddenly you know um and and we connect more to our soul if if we allow it we have that opportunity and so i'd love to see people working to look after our planet and nature that's that's the way god has taught me everything is out in nature through nature and we're forgetting that this beautiful planet that god has given us it's a gift never mind this planet and sometimes when we're given a gift for free we treat it badly but we can't afford to treat this planet badly. It's the only one we've got. It's the only, there's others out there, you know, that, that maybe man can go to at some time, but not now. But I always think, you know, we have and all who, of these- who would want to go there? This yeah. planet is gorgeous. We have, um, I, you, do, are, you aware, can... are, are you aware of the, uh, the, the famous American car and space explorer CEO, Elon Musk? I think I have heard the name. He's uh, quite a smart man and he's done some amazing things, but he likes to, he would like us to go to Mars and to colonize Mars. Well, what if we took care of this planet first? Wouldn't exactly. that be nice? <laughs> that would be nice, you know, yeah. and, and I believe we can do that because that was one of the futures I was shown. One of the real positive, and I know we can bring them all together. Again, I know I have mentioned it where we make our world like, look like a little glimpse of heaven. So we yeah. can do it. No pollution, nothing like that. Yes. You know, and the, te so we, the technology can. exists today, doesn't it? That we could it actually does. bring ourselves back into balance with nature and, and, and exist and still be happy. Yeah, um, definitely. That's you a know, beautiful vision. And I, I truly pray that it, it comes true. 
I, I, I believe of, well, God wouldn't be still working all these incredible miracles in my life for everyone else for the future. Like the Ser Serif, if I'm pronouncing it, foundation, like I'm just blown away by a stranger who was a stranger at first, you know, gave this property as a gift. And, and I, I know it's falling down and we're trying to get money to fix it all up. But one thing I was told, and I think I told you the other day, um, it is for spiritual growth, it's for, it's for education, it's for bringing us all together. But one thing I, I was told, and that was that even though it'll change over time, it'll still be a huge part of our world and everybody, every, every soul within the world. And it'll still be, because I had said to God, don't make it, you know, too long. And he said, it'll still be here in 300 years time, but probably forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so, and, and I remember saying that once to an audience in America, and then they turned around and said, oh, well, then we don't have to worry about um, pollution of our planet, climate change. And I said, of course you have to. You know, we we need our planet to to live. Yeah, it, it provides literally everything, and and angel planet. And I know I, we never spoke of of him. There's so much to talk about, but you know, like I said, I could talk to you, but I know you're six hours ahead of us, and you know, pretty soon you're going to be off to bed, and I haven't eaten anything all day, so you know, oh, it's probably not so going to happen. You're hungry too. <laughs> yes. But that's okay. Um, a lot more questions, but uh, I guess what I wanted to say was we need to find a way to come back into balance with the planet yes, we and do. help nature. Um, by the way, in your book, you mention a way to connect with your guardian angel is to pester them, which I thought oh, was, yes. I, I thought that was hilarious. And you're supposed to ask them. So you're supposed to ask them their name. And the first yes. thing that pops into your head is usually some kind of representation of their name. I keep thinking that the name of my guardian angel, probably I don't have it correctly, um, but you say that's okay, that they forgive you and everything. But you ask them, you're supposed to ask them for a sign, like a feather floating down or a butterfly flying around or something simple. I just wanted to let you know yesterday I got my feather. Thank you. Good. I'm glad Very to happy. hear that. Very happy. Um, so folks, remember that. Yell and pester your guardian angel. If something is not going correct in your life or you think that something is unfair, yell and scream and pound your fist at the guardian angel to that you want something done. And eventually something will be done. Okay. How can we make people know each other and God better? How can we help people to know each other? I, I think that is... Um... We just have to learn how to, in one sense, you know, talk to each other because people don't talk to each other as much as they used to. It's kind of neighbors don't know each other as well because they're in too much of a rush, I would say, slow down. Yeah. And, and with what has happened with this virus, it has helped us to slow down. Like I, I see people now out walking and they're actually stopping to listen to the birds or they stop and they look at a tree and they're pointing at it. It's like as if they have seen it for the first time. And children out on the streets, on the road playing, you know, being free, not being only um, you have to wait for a play date. You know. Um, Make them go out and roll in the mud. Yeah, you know, and, <laughs> and we have to actually get back, get back to that. Um, to, to allow us to, to grow spiritually, to make that connection back, back to nature. Like I meet so many children, you know, and, you know, sometimes I would say to them, you know, do you know your guardian angel's name? And they say, oh, yes. And the mom and dad is there and probably their granny and all. And the child comes out and gives this name and the parents, are like, but they never told us. But a child won't tell you, mm -hmm. you know unless you ask you know children are i think they are becoming more and more aware of their guardian angel 
And I would say to parents to try and not close down a child spiritually. Sometimes a child will say something, but, you know, and then if you question them, they look at you and they don't understand why you're questioning them. And I would say, don't question them. Just remember what they said. Especially maybe if it was a message for yourself of something in the future, if, if you've taken a note of it and it comes about, whether it was a bit negative or all positive. Well, if it was all positive, you'll know, right, we're going that way. But if it was a bit negative to be cautious and careful, like parents now are telling me that their, their child will turn around and say, no, we won't go yet in the car, mom. Let's wait five minutes. And, and then sometimes you would have a parent would say, you know, we waited the five minutes and we left, but nothing happened. But that's why nothing happened. Right, 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 right. <laughs> you know, you don't want something to happen. The child was given the message. You avoided that accident or that pothole or that brush with the law that you got a speeding ticket or something like yeah. that. Right. So ask, okay. for, ask for signs all the time. I think it's what it's wonderful the, the fact that, you know, it's, it's not... A, a nice thing that so many people have gotten sick and so many people have died from this pandemic. But you're right, you go out, you see people walking, you see people interacting. Um, in my neighborhood, we're having a little neighborhood backyard get together, you know, that these people have never spoken to one another before. And we're connecting and in promoting this particular YouTube yeah. event, I was praying with my feet and walking up and down the street, stuffing mailboxes with flyers and doing all kinds of crazy stuff, handing out flyers to police people. I think it's important to interact with people like that and, and spread good feelings and good vibrations out there. Yeah, so we, thank you. We, thank you for teaching me that, Lorna. We have to spread more love, you know, lots, lots of hope. And then we have to remind people that you're not just a human being, you're a spiritual being. And, and, and we want that intertwining to happen of the body and soul, you know, and I, I know it will happen but it all depends. God and the angels will never take away our free will, ever. So it's it's up to us. So but, really, we're the architects of whatever yeah. future we're building for ourselves. Yes. It's all based on our choices and yes. whether we choose the right course or the wrong course, or if we choose to be greedy and take the bribe or make the business decision that is going to be bad for somebody else, but good for me. Yeah. We, we should be making the choice that this is good for everybody. This is good. This is something that spreads joy and love in a, in a positive direction. This is something good for the planet. So, for example, do I mow the lawn three times a week and waste all that gasoline? Or do I plant trees in my lawn and stop growing grass? That's what I'm going to be doing in my yard, just for, as an example. All right, I'll stop talking because I... Okay. <laughs> I, You've known this in our last interaction. I get all flustered because I'm talking to you and this, we need that's to hear the, you. You're the special guest. That's, that's okay. Well, that, that is one thing I, I was told on, on this property that um, this person bought for us and gave to us as a gift for, for the foundation. Um, one thing God has told me to do, I have to have 24 acres in trees. There you go. Perfect. You know, to protect, to protect all on nature that is all on that property and to bring people from all over the world, um, a school, children, all faiths and none. Mm -hmm. and, and for them all to pray together, because that's one thing. Um, I always notice that people are afraid when they see someone else praying in a different way. If you want to pray standing on your head, nobody should be offended or feel fearful. What are they doing? You know, in that way, it should be all right. They're in prayer and no one prays alone. Your guardian angel is praying with you. Who, but who hears us when we pray, prayer, Lorna? God hears you. God hears every single prayer. He does not, what, God does not miss any prayer. What, what, do, what are the angels doing when we pray? Um, the way I have explained it, the angels of prayer are when we even pray, even when we're sitting on a bus and we're saying a prayer, um, the angels of prayer are like, they are, 
how would I say, you know, the way we see a waterfall coming down? Well, they're like a waterfall going up. So, you know, so full of light and so, so fast. It's, I can't, I find it so hard to explain in human words what I have been allowed to see. And I think it's, it's very important for us all to remember is that I'm just an ordinary person, you know, like everyone else. And if I can see God's angels, and if on occasions when God allows me to see someone's soul, or, or God comes and ruffles my hair. Um, Can't do that with me, unfortunately. <laughs> well, he might blow on it. <laughs> you know, I know all these spiritual experiences can happen for you as well. You know, I see no reason why why people can't see their guardian angel or, or, or looking at their mother and see their mother's guardian angel. I don't understand that because if I can, but I'm so aware of my soul. So I'm probably seeing and, and saying it in a human way is, is seeing through the eyes of my soul, not really my eyes, but my soul eyes behind my eyes looking out you know, and, and seeing, and if God is allowing that to happen for me, um, I see no reason why it can't happen for the rest of the world. But I know sometimes when people say, you know, they want to reach enlightenment, you know, they have to do billions and billions of things. All that you have to do is, you know, be aware of your soul and, and, I believe everyone reaches enlightenment, let's say thousands of times in their life. They just don't recognize it, you know, and, and it's like for you, you've reached enlightenment by suddenly discovering something that you didn't discover before. And that is when you found myself on YouTube on, you know, and, and no one, I'm all the time learning. God is, and the angels are teaching me all the time. So sometimes when somebody would say, oh, they know everything, we never know everything. Because I it's think, like, I, I think it's it just, this is just my personal view is it's incredibly important to be humble. And oh, yes, definitely. And, and I always tell, I, you know, I, you, you've talked with my mother, uh, Vivian. Uh, who's a retired minister, and I've had numerous debates and discussions with her over the course of our lives together. And in my opinion, heaven help the poor SOB who pretends to know the mind of God and pretends to go around preaching that he knows what God needs and God wants and God God is telling us. No one knows that but God no, himself. No, one, don't, no one knows. Don't go there. No. You know? <laughs> and in reading your books, and this is kind of the my epiphany was that uh, reading your books kind of confirmed that I had always kind of understood that even as a young person, but never got that message in the church that I was in or the many churches that over my life. But I think it's incredibly important to pay, you know, even the, our, our Buddhist friends say, pay attention, be in the moment. Mm -hmm. Every day is new. Every day has new learning capabilities and, and opportunities for us and new choices. Yeah, right. every day is new beginnings. It's uh, that's that's a, a beautiful start. statement in and of itself. You know, new beginnings. Right. Everything's fresh if you look at life yeah. that way. And yeah. you can be happy. And yeah. you say it's important for us to try and be happy about our circumstances. Oh, before I ask you another question, there's okay. this story that folks who haven't read the book, um, I, I want you to talk about. Um, this is a point I think where your husband Joe is very sick. You're running out of money. The electric bill is about your electricity is about to be shut off for non-payment. You don't have any food. There's no way to buy food. And you're out in the vegetable garden in the rain and your hair is all soaked. And then who appears? Um, I think it was Archangel Michael, was it? I think it was Angel Hosis. Or oh, Angel Hosis. And if rascal. I remember in the book, his he made the appearance that he was all sopping wet too. Wet. I, I, think, <laughs> I think that day I was out um, in the garden 
I don't think I was picking fruit because it just happened so many times. I think it was the Brussels sprouts and my fingers were so cold and everything. And I was given out because we didn't have, have much. And um, God always sends us what we need. And I'm, I'm always, I was always amazed when someone you didn't know listened and, you know, dropped an envelope in the door. Like I remember, you know, this envelope, which I think it was 20 pounds, uh, old Irish money. Mm. And that was like, that was like a thousand pounds to us. Yeah. You know, and the first thing, you know, that was done with that was, you know, pay the ESB bill, but to go to the shops, you know, and buy food. Yeah. You know, what we milk and bread, just the ordinary things. And, you know, one packet of biscuits, maybe a little treat, you know, um, like if you have faith and and you admit to yourself, you know, that you are a human being, but you're a spiritual being. And I know I'm going back to this all the time and that you have a soul. You know, that spark of light of God. Um, you are, you know, an incredible person then. Because Could you repeat that last part? You kind of froze up there for a second. Oh, did I? Yeah. I, I was saying that if, if we acknowledge to ourselves, then, you know, that we have a soul and we are. And because of that, that we are capable of incredible things, you know, of all that love and compassion and changing and, and knowing that, that when we ask for a helping hand, we will get it. But now you don't ask for a helping hand in the sense that you want, you know, the biggest TV screen or something. <laughs> you probably won't get that. But, but, when, but when you are in need, and, and I always say, you know, Give with a pure heart and expect nothing in return. That that is very important. Be be the good Samaritan. What you I'm know. finding out is, um, thanks to your guidance, is that when I pray, I feel like I'm plugged into some kind of network. Yes, I you feel, are. Because when you're praying, so for example, if I'm praying that um, something good happens for somebody that I know. Yeah then it's sending a message from angel to angel that they're trying to make something good happen for that person. And when you're on the receiving end, then you are the feet that are supposed to make that action happen. Right. So go yeah, out the I door, mean, turn left, yeah. you know, yes, a neighbor exactly. that needs your help. Yeah. And, help and, and, and you should, but lots of the times we're kind of, I hate using this word, but the angels keep saying, God said you can use it. We're kind of lazy. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's the word I, I, I don't, I, I've been very nervous about using, but we are kind of ner lazy. We, we don't get up and do it. Well, I've but always bragged that I'm the laziest man on earth and I'm really, really good at sitting on my hind end. You know? Well, when you have listened this time, you made a contact, <laughs> you know, you went onto YouTube and, and God has, um, you, how would I say, I don't like using the word either used you, but That's okay. yes, but, but for the good of, of others. And, and you always must remember, you know, prayer is very powerful. And because you have prayed, you never know whose life you have saved or how many lives you've saved because of your prayer or, or in a sense, you know, that smile that you gave someone when, when you were out, you know, or that gesture of kindness. Um, I always remember um, when I was in one of the cities and this young man coming up to me, maybe he was about 26, 27, and never met him in my life before. And he just came up to me and said, you know, just grab my hand and said, I want to shake your hand and thank you for saving my life. And he just said, thank you, thank you. And here I was looking at him and, and seeing his guardian angel with him. And, and then he just walks off, you know, but 
that was that, wonderful and and we all do that we all we all do it so so we we must pray and, and we must smile and and we must help others and and we must change this world and and make it you know a beautiful place and and we can do that yes i believe we can i believe we have the capability um especially after you know starting to pray in with the things in mind that that you talk about i'm going to get to a few more questions here because i'm afraid we're going to be you'd given me a an angelic timeline in, in terms yes. of how this is supposed to go so i'm trying to follow that i don't <laughs> i don't want to get anybody upstairs angry with me um and I'm sorry, I'm going to have to skip through some of these questions because I don't think we're going to have time to get to them all. Um, and some of them have already been answered. Let's see. Even without recognizing, how do we start losing our connection with the sparkling light in us? I think they mean <laughs> perhaps our soul. And may become a quote unquote bad person after some time. And you've seen, I think, in some of your books, you've, you've referenced people that have kind of severed their connection with their soul. And usually that, that happens because of pain and hurt. And it is not that you've severed your connection um, with your soul. You just don't believe anymore that you're a good person or that you're capable of love or you're capable of of being forgiven or forgiving yourself. And ev everyone is, and, and I would say to, to that person, you know, let tomorrow morning or now, this very moment, be a new beginning. Remind yourself that you have a soul, you have a guardian angel. And from now on, you're going to try and be pure love you're going to try and say say to yourself it's okay to love yourself but it's okay to show kindness and love to others as well even even if they're afraid of it you have to remember sometimes people are afraid because most of the time when someone is showing kindness or love to another person especially a stranger they sometimes think you're going to rob them or hurt them Mm -hmm. you know and and you're not you're there to help so it's like if you see someone needing their car pushed or, or they're broken down or they seem confused you know guide them to where they need to go you know or sometimes I would say if you were in a cafe and suddenly a thought came into your mind to get an extra cup of tea or cup of coffee and here you're saying to yourself I have two what do I want two for? Mm -hmm. We know you only want one, but we know when you go out and you're walking down the road or you sit at a table, you know, you see someone else that all of a sudden you, you see another person and they stand out, you mm -hmm. give them the coffee. You yeah. know, that gesture is, is again connection of love to your soul. You've just lit that person's day up. And you something have very simple. Yeah. Yes. And, and you probably you have saved their life because you, you don't know. And allow someone else to save you and become a stronger and better person. Become a good person. Recognize that you have a soul and you have a guardian angel. And yes, you are, what would I say? You are worth it. You are precious. Because you're precious to me. And if you think no one in the world cares about you or loves you, I love you and I care about you. And I know God loves you and cares about you. And I know your guardian angel is wrapped around you trying to help you to recognize that you aren't disconnected from your soul. It's and loving you so much. This new beginning every day too is, is huge because if you're having a rough day, or a bad day, or you're down, or if you had a series of bad days, yeah. tomorrow's a new day, a new beginning, and just realize that you're going to get through it. And even if you don't, you're, it's just your body. Eventually, your soul is going back home. Yes. And according to your message, it doesn't matter 
whether you're from one country or another or any religion or another. And I remember during our conversation, I asked you this question because in many of our Abrahamic faiths who believe in one God, uh, and I have a bazillion more questions. We could be doing this for three hours, Lorna. I'm sorry. Well, we can't. Uh, <laughs> not I know. Anyway. It's, you, you need you need dinner now, and not you need to go to bed. I, I need I need dinner, and I I need to um, get back home. An hour and a half's journey. So. Oh no, I didn't know you were that yeah. far away. My goodness. Uh, All right. I, I I came up to my son to do this because my internet oh. is not as good. All right. Well, let me let me ask a couple of more questions from the YouTube then, and and then. What, I'll, what I'd like to do is ask you when we close is not yeah. only will I thank you profusely for being a part of this. You've really made my day, my life. Um, but I'd like for, for everybody, if you would share the prayer of the healing angels. Yes, I will. Close, that yeah. would be fantastic. Okay. I have uh, one of my family members that is going through a rough time and... Why does love hurt so much when we love, when love is the greatest power? Does this make sense? It does actually make sense because that's how you know it's love. Mm -hmm. If it didn't hurt, it wasn't love. And, and that is why love is so powerful. It moves every emotion within us. It's love that makes us, you know, that wonderful person. It's love who, that makes us who we are. And that depends on how much love we allow ourselves to love or allow love to come into our life. Um, so it does make sense. Love does hurt. Okay. okay. Yes. How do we get others in the US to join us in saving the earth if they don't believe there is a problem? Should we just keep trying on our own? I think I think we have to. It is hard to get, you know, others to to realize until something happens for them. Um, but in the meantime, I think everyone else who believes has has to work in that direction to heal our planet to to save it. So even if you have to give partitions into your government, all, all kinds of things, or I don't know what you, your state, I know it's different in America, you know, um, you've got to do that and not let people cut down trees or, or, or destroy life or, or chemicals on the land. Ireland here is very good. We allow very little, you know, um, because we need every insect, even though we might be afraid of some insects. But we actually need them. Yes. Um, we need them for our food. Um, we need all the bees and all the flies for the same reason. Um, and the same with the birds and all of the other wild animals. Um, we need every, every blade of grass. You know, so everyone... We rivers. Yeah, we, we all have to play our part, but we really and truly have to play our part now. It's kind of, you know... We don't need all the things that we throw away anymore. We should be recycling more and we shouldn't be in the sense of making so many things out of plastic when now we know what plastic does. We have to save our oceans. We have to save our, our rivers. Science already knows that we ourselves are inhaling plastic in the air. We're even drinking it in our water. Yes. And, and they're afraid that in the future, and maybe not too far in the future, children will be born that will have a plastic lung and it won't work. Or, you know, things Ugh. like that. We don't, we don't realize all of this, how important nature is, how important it is for us to clean up our planet and to heal the ozone layer. Um, and I know we can do it because I have seen that we can we can do it. And but, but we have to make that choice. Okay. So I would say everyone I, I, get out there and do what you have to do. I'm gonna be greedy and I'm gonna ask the last question, if that's oh, okay with you. That's the last question. You and I spoke earlier, um, being raised in the Lutheran Church, which is very similar to the Catholic Church. Um, and I think in a sense, all of the Abrahamic faiths that believe in the one God have a, there's a sense of that God's love is not unconditional. Mm 
God's that you need to do certain things in a certain way. Um, so for example, there's a certain amount of guilt associated with behavior or the way you think or feel. And I asked you a question, Lorna, what about sin? And you about got out of your chair and looked like you were going to smack me. You said, it doesn't matter. So could you talk a little bit about God's unconditional love for us? Well, God has unconditional love for us. Um, we, we are his children. He has given us, you know, part of himself, that spark of light of God, which is our soul. And he forgives us no matter what we do. But that doesn't mean that, that we don't try to be more loving and more caring. You know, he's given us that, that, that free, free will. God has never shown me him sending any soul to that place we call hell. I've never seen God turn away any soul that has, any person that has died. He's never. Um, and to me, that is such a loving and kind God. And yet pe people say, but how is he when such horrible things are happening in the world? But he's given us free will. He's given us this planet. He's telling us, live your life. Turn this planet into a horrible place, into a horrible world if you want. But I'll still love you. I'll still take you home. But you can turn it into a wonderful world as well. So we have that choice. And, and I, I do understand we do blame God, just like we, we use God as a weapon to justify killing and, and, and destroying. But God loves us and we have that choice. We have that free will and God is real. And, and yet I can't see how on earth did he fall in love with us to give us life forever. We never die, it's only our human body. And, and if we get in more contact with our soul and, allow, and take that next step of evolution, I know I explain it more in the books, but I'm trying to keep it short here, um, and allow that intertwining. You know, our bodies won't get sick anymore. You know, because our bodies will have become one with our soul. You know, and whatever God has seen in us, I'm so glad he has. Me too. I'm so glad that he loves us so much. Others may condemn us and criticize us. And, and even when someone does something for greed and things like that, you never know why they did it for greed. You never know what was behind it. So if we can allow ourselves to heal all the things that are behind everything, you know, wanting that revenge, like the father killing others because his family was slaughtered. You know, he just, just had revenge in his mind. And, and then when he had children of his own, suddenly the horror of what he had done. What if someone came into my home now and slaughtered my children? It was like, he read angels in my hair and it was like, suddenly he saw, you know, the, this negativity of wanting revenge, that revenge only goes around in a circle. It never stops. Well, it never stops, but we can stop it. Well, and you we in, in Ireland it. know this know this best, I think. I mean, the, the conflict in Ireland has been going on for centuries. And when we were talking about Betty Williams before, she was one of the architects of the peace between the yes. two sides in Ireland. Ireland it's is a bad. beautiful story. And it's a perfect, a perfect example of weaponizing God. Right? Yes. That's well, one thing we should never do, uh, use God as a weapon. If uh, if Angel Hostess is there, he's about to hammer me over the head with the yes. with his, uh, <laughs> schoolmaster stick. Um, <laughs> so I, I'd, I'd like to first uh, ask Lorna to close with the prayer, and then I have a few comments, and then um, we'll get on with our lives. Okay. Well, I'm... This, this prayer that um, the Archangel Michael gave me, he gave it to me when Joe was alive. And I know I tell the story in Angels in My Hair. 
I think it's in Angels in My Hair. I don't forget which book um, different things are in. Um, but you have to remember, these are God's words. And when, when the book was being published and in different countries and all, I had to fight for the words not to be changed because people said, or publishers said, it wasn't proper English, but they're God's words and you can't change God's words. It's not really about the angels. So I will say this prayer now for everyone. Um, prayer of thy healing angels that is carried from God by the Archangel Michael. Pour out thy healing angels, thy heavenly host, upon everyone that is on YouTube and listening to this and whenever they do. Let them feel the beam of thy healing angels upon them, the light of your healing hand. Let the healing begin, whatever way God grants it. God bless us all. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Lorna. Okay. And thank you. What a wonderful event. What an absolutely wonderful event. And thank you so much. All right. I hope everyone, you know, if this was a live event, everyone would be, would be clapping at this point, but uh, we can't hear them clap. So we'll just pretend that everyone's applauding. I hope everyone will join me in thanking Lorna for joining us today. She has a long trip home and she's made a, quite a sacrifice to be with us. I encourage everyone to look on other YouTube channel, um, feed the, any of the videos uh, uh, on YouTube featuring Lorna. And please read any of her available books. I personally believe that her message of God's unconditional love for us, regardless of religion or nationality, is exactly what the world needs now. Can you close? And um, Oh, yes. And please stay tuned for future Niagara Foundation videos on this channel. Um, I'm sure they'll have other speakers. And I'd like to thank everybody for making this happen. And thank God for the miracle of making this happen. And God bless you, Lorna. You've, you've changed you. my life and you've changed thousands of others. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Take, take care now. God bless. God bless you, everyone. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.